Hey and welcome to another ICH2 video. Look what we've got. Oh yes, look, it's the DCC Sound Sparrowhawk. Isn't she gorgeous? Just look at that. What an amazing model. Now I know that this has been out for ages. It, it seriously has been out for like a couple of years at least or something. But um, I only got it, well I only received it not too long ago. And that was basically as a, as a thank you for some work that was done. And um, the timing seems perfect, doesn't it? Because it's the A4 Great Gathering at the NRM in July. That is literally just weeks away. And it's all about Mallard's record-breaking speed um, record. Um, yeah, <laughs> and this isn't Mallard, as we know. But it is the same class. It is an A4, a Gresley designed A4. Now there weren't many of them built, were there? I think it's 35. There weren't many built. Um, it would say, it do, I'm pretty sure it says somewhere on the back there. But, I mean, just look at it. This class of locomotive needs no introduction. That iconic shape is, well, it's as famous as, you know, the red telephone boxes of Britain or the Google logo or the space shuttle. I mean, it's just, it's just iconic. There's nothing else like it in the world. It's just amazing. And whether you like them with all the fairing that covers that or whether you like them with it off, um, I personally don't mind. I don't mind. I, I, I quite like to see the linkage because it looks fancy. I like to see it moving. But yes, whether that's is on or off, I I just love this design. It's beautiful. It's what I fell in love with when I was little. It's what most people fall in love with when they're little. You know, it's just like, it's just an iconic steam locomotive. And then as you grow older, you learn about black fives and everything else. But yes, this is amazing. And what's particularly amazing is it's DCC sound fitted. So the chip is already fitted in this model, nicely in the tender. Uh, with the speaker as well, so this, like, the speakers are here and the chips there, or the other way around. Um, it's nice Hornby packaging as well. It's, well, it's it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It, it, the sleeve on it is quite nice. I like that because they put all this information on the back. Um, the only problem I have with this information is, oh come on Hornby. I mean, we know about Backman's terrible uh, grammar and punctuation. But Hornby have made a, a boo-boo as well. They've made a mistake. Just look at this. See if you can um, notice this uh, just like I did. Uh, Sparrowhawk was withdrawn from service on the 27th of November and then succumbed to the Cutter's Torch on the 19th of June. Right. So basically it was um, withdrawn from service in November and then they went back in time to June through a portal, like a time tunnel thing that they discovered, and they cut it up. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it was probably withdrawn from service in June, which is quite amazing, because that basically means that we're about a week away, or well, a week out. We are a week out, we're, we've gone beyond a, a week um, and 50 years. So 50 years and a week ago, um, this actual locomotive was withdrawn. I'm pretty sure that's probably what it was. And then it was actually cut up in November. Either that, or it was cut up, um, sorry, it was withdrawn from service a year before, and then basically just rusted and rusted, and then they cut it up. But I'm pretty sure that those two just need swapping around. Ah, uh, well, never mind. I mean, people that type this up, you know, they're only human. That's why mistakes happen. Uh, <laughs> of course, if I typed it up, there wouldn't be any. But, <laughs> um, yeah, enough about that. So let's open the box and have a look at it. As I say, it's really, really nice packaging. Just slide that off there. Um, well, uh, here we go. Now, some people aren't too excited by this type of packaging, but I love it. I love it. Yes, it's polystyrene and everything, but they've got rid of the silly hole system where you have to push it out. And you basically just unlock each end and then lift the top off. And I think that's really good. I actually really like that. So, so there, so new. Yeah. <laughs> right, 
Oh, wow. Well, of course, this is one of those special bits of paper that I could have done with last week when we looked at the, the Black 5 sound locomotive. Um, by the way, thank you so much for um, telling me what the sounds were. Um, you, in, in the comments, in messages, and even tweets. You're ace. You're just ace. I love you to bits. So, we should have a list of the sounds somewhere. I mean, gosh, there's so much here. Decoder settings. Here we go. There we go. Air pump, injector, shunting mode, coal shoveling, steam whistle, coupler clank, uh, conductor sig... Wow, well, I'm not going to be able to listen to brake release or signal whistle 1 or signal whistle 2 because of the control I have, but I can certainly listen to the others, so that's quite cool. Um, we'll fold that up, he says. There we go. Now, there's some instructions here for the Class A4. I've got instructions for the Class A4 already, so I'll double check to see if there's any differences, just in case these have like an update or something. It does indeed say um, DCC ready, DCC fitted and sound, so I'm not too sure if the instructions are different. Yes, they do look quite different to my other ones. Maybe I'll have to have two sets of A4 instructions then. But it's the same thing, so you've got the section up here where you put the lubrication. Uh, call removal and replacement. Okay, that's quite fancy. Uh, DCC ready, well this is DCC sound fitted. Um, and it's got another one of those little plugs that we have to put into the socket on the tender in order to pass the signals from one to the other. Very good. Right. So, let's just get this out of shot, because I'm obsessive compulsive. There we go. And let's take the ends off. See, now I, I like this. And then what you do is you just take away this window, like that. Hang on, what have we got here? Oh, I know what this is. Let me just show you. Yeah, let's have a look, eh? Let's have a quick look. I don't usually do this. Oops, that's... Um, some piping, I'll come back to that in a second. Gosh, some more piping. Wow, I have to be gentle with that. Um, this wheel is to do with radius curves, different radius of curves, I, I imagine, different radii. Is that right? Is it radii? I don't know, I didn't do Latin. Okay, it looks like it's supplied with a flat wheel, and that's almost certainly because of tight radius curves. However, if you're just displaying the model, or you have really, really gentle curves, you can take that flat wheel off, and you can put on a proper wheel, like this, with a flange. Obviously, if you try to run it around a really tight bend, you might notice a problem, but I don't have really tight bends. Uh, it should be running on third radius at the tightest, so, um, and she'll actually be running on fourth radius today, so she should be okay. And then, yes, there's some piping detail. Look at this, look how intricate it is. And there's another piece that fell down there. It's absolutely beautiful. Just, I mean, I don't know if I can get the camera to show you that, uh, but just look at that piping. Absolutely beautiful. And that's good, that's really nice. Um, I, shall, I shall take great care in fitting that later. Okay, so let's put the instructions and the plastic out of the way and then lift the top off, just like that. There we go. Let's take the, um, well, what do I take out first? Let's take out the locomotive. Wow, really heavy. And just look at that blue. Is it garter blue? Is it called garter blue? Or is it um, experimental blue? Um, I, I, can't, I can't think now. I did read somewhere what kind of blue it is. Um, which is outshot, blah 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 blah, uh, standard garter delivery, uh, base that's shared, which painted in wartime black, and then she was put into apple green. Um, I don't, it doesn't say really, does it? Is that garter blue? I, I don't know. But it is stunning. Just look how royal it looks. It's beautiful. So there's the locomotive, and then here's the tender. Absolutely beautiful as well. Oh yes, stunning. Wow, let's have a look at it in detail. Just look at that. Isn't that stunning? <laughs> You've got to agree. It doesn't matter whether you model diesel or steam or um, plants, just plants, lots and lots of plants. You've got to agree that this is gorgeous. 
absolutely beautiful. I love that blue. It's just so smart. Sparrowhawk. And look at the wheels there. Look at how shiny they are. Look at the linkage and how you've got all the connecting rods. It's just so intricate, isn't it? I mean, I, I can't wait to see it at speed. I genuinely can't wait. Um, if I just disconnect the tender like that, then we can have a closer look at the actual locomotive, can't we? So what have we got? Well, we've got a, a nice freely rotating bogey at the front here, which is the lead bogey, isn't it? That's the, those are the leading wheels. That's all they do, basically. And they, they do help with weight distribution um, and axle loads, you know, but um, basically they're to help guide the locomotive around bends and over points and stuff like that. So, and then you've got, of course, your main driving wheels. So the, the configuration, as you can see, is four, six, two, four, six, and then two. And what, what's that called? Yes, Pacific, well done. It's known as the Pacific wheel arrangement. And without even pushing, I know that these buffers are gonna be sprung. Oh yes, of course they are. I mean, you don't pay, you know, the kind of money that this locomotive costs and not get sprung buffers. It's gonna be the same on the tender as well. Just wait for the camera to focus, there we go. Yep, sprung buffers. Now, um, I think that the locomotive can take a coupling at the front, he says. No, maybe it can't. But then, that's fine, that's absolutely fine. I'm glad it doesn't, because it should never ever be coupled to anything at the front. <laughs> it, well, I don't think it should. It should never be pushing anything or pulling anything. I mean, that just defeats the object of this design, doesn't it? But they have got a coupling at the back, obviously. And it's NEM. Oh yes. Come on, focus. There we go. So again, it's the dovetail connector, just there. But this itself is a natural NEM pocket. So if you wanted to, you could take out this slimline tension lock and put in, um, you know, a KD coupler or a knuckle coupler or any other type of coupler you wanted, which is really, really good. It's nice of Hornby to do that. You know, Hornby often get criticised for not doing that enough, but they have done it. They have done it in this case, so let's give them credit. Um, I don't know what exhaust that is. I can't tell you what type of um, uh, chimney, you know, but I do know that Mallard had a, a new one, didn't it? It had a special one which helped it to reach such a high speed. Was it 126 miles per hour? <sighs> Amazing. But, yeah. Um, and it was pulling a big train at the time, wasn't it? Was it seven coaches? Six or seven coaches? Okay, it was going downhill. But they weren't even trying, you know. It, it just happened. And it's, it's just gone down in world history. Still unbeaten, as far as I know. So, it just... It's just testament to this design, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Um, I'm assuming this is probably the whistle, is it? Is that right? Is that the whistle? And those are probably the safety valves, I would have thought. Do those move? Do those slide? They do. Wow. It, oh, stresses out the focus, but yes, they do. You can move these little um, sliding panels in the roof there. That's really, really nice. Do those move? Gosh, I think they do. Yes, that's incredible. Wow, what detail, what attention to detail. And then look at the front here. We've got like a, a three chain link. We've got some vacuum tubing. I haven't put that on by the way, that, that was just already there. You've got metal handrails running all the way down the length of the body, like that. Um, again, be gentle. <laughs> I don't want to break anything. Um, you can see how the, even this design incorporates the um, cylinders and, and steam chest and stuff. So aerodynamic, it's beautiful. And then you've got the firebox obviously at this end. And look at that for cab detail. Now, a lot of people comment on my videos and they say, what's the point in cab detail? You can't really see it. Well, in certain instances you, you're right, you can't. but. Again, in some instances, you can. And it's really nice to have it there. It just, it's about thought, isn't it? It's a really nice touch. And it does look beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Um, this is the connector, obviously, to the tender. And then that's your little DCC wire there that connects the motor 
to the chip in the tender down there. So be gentle with them, of course, be really, really gentle. Um, and there's a window. The livery is beautiful, by the way, it really is. And do you know, there's something else I haven't mentioned, um, because this is YouTube, it's not smell -o vision but I can smell oil. I, I genuinely can, I can smell oil on this locomotive. Almost like it's real, you know. <laughs> I just wish that this boiler was actually roasting hot and there was steam just, you know, trickling out of the top there. Oh, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, maybe one day. Maybe one day. But this is... Oh, it's out of the... It's out of this world. What stunning detail. I've always loved the A4s by Hornby. I've always felt that they have had the, an edge over the ones by Batman. And with this being DCC sound, I, really, seriously, Batman just can't compete when it comes to um, the A4s now. This is just stunning. I'm not going to try and take that coal load out, but it is loose. So it, you, you definitely can take it out. Um, this particular tender doesn't look like a corridor tender though, does it? Which is quite curious. Because they, they were often corridor tenders, weren't they? That were coupled up to the A4. But this does not look like a corridor tender to me. I don't see any little door. Hmm. Maybe somebody can comment below and explain that to me. But there's the pin that connects to the uh, locomotive. And um, there's not masses of detail here. You've got just like a, a little badge there that probably tells you that it's the LNER or that it was built in Doncaster, um, or that its water capacity is five thousand gallons. I don't know, but everything I've just told you is true. This is the British Rail early emblem, and it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Spot on. Not a single blemish, not a single mark. And I love the white stripe that goes around. It just contrasts with that blue, that royal blue, so well. And you've even got a little vacuum tube on the back there. <sighs> stunning. Absolutely stunning. There's quite a bit of weight to that as well. Considering it's just a tender, that weighs almost as much as some of the other um, locomotives I've looked at. So this itself is oh really heavy, which is great. No traction tyres, no need for them. Fantastic. Blown away. Absolutely gorgeous. And you know it's going to get better because she makes sounds as well. Okay, so here we are at the layout. Now I've got a Sparrowhawk with me. Here we go, um, and I have to say, she was incredibly fiddly to connect together. That tiny little plug we looked at earlier, the really tiny white one, that has to connect into the little socket on the front of the tender just underneath. My gosh, that was so fiddly, it was untrue. And because those wires are so thin, they're like hairs, I was just really genuinely scared of snapping it and breaking something off um, something that would not be very easy to repair so I definitely recommend using caution to connect the locomotive to the tender this is the point usually where somebody will come along and say oh well actually it was dead dead easy I did it in two seconds fine good for you but I am telling you now you have got to be careful okay because if you do damage those wires then you could be in for an expensive repair. So be really gentle. Put it in a loco servicing cradle if you have one, so that it's upside down. And if you haven't, then lay it down on the side of a towel or a tea towel or something, and just be really, really gentle when you do. But the pin, the um, the plug will only go in one way, so that's that's a good thing. Um, and when you do get it to go in, just firmly push it all the way down so it makes a good connection. And hey presto, job done. So, anyway, that little rant out of the way. Um, she is on the track, all of her wheels are on. The front leading bogey here is on, all of her main drive wheels are on. These basically just hover above the rails, so <laughs> we won't worry about them for now. I will replace them, but not right now. And the tender is on and coupled up as well. Oh no, no it's not. Tell a lie. Uh, after all that, the tender has come out of place, so I'm just going to make sure the pin is in that hole 
like that. There we go. Now the tender is properly on. Hmm. <laughs> See what I mean? It's just so fiddly. Okay, she's good to go. Um, I've given her the number 36, so if I just select 36, um, that's not her permanent number, that's just a number for me to experiment with. So let's just give her a little bit of a wiggle. Oh, look at that. Now, I must point out that she has been run in, okay? So we don't need to worry about going too slow or going too fast. She has been run in. That was done a long time ago. Um, when she was new, basically. Just get her to roll forward a bit. Oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Right, where were those instructions for the sounds? Okay, here they are. So, let's turn the sounds on by holding down function and number one. There we go. So, again, that's basically just her idle sound. <laughs> if she was a car, she'd just be ticking over now, quite happily. So, number two is apparently the steam whistle. So, let's give that a go. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt that is definitely an A4. Um, <laughs> that was, oh gosh, that sent, that sent shivers down my spine. That was, it's like it was hurtling towards me. I could see my life flash before my eyes. Let's try number three. That is apparently the coupler clank. Yep, that sounded like a coupling clank to me. Number four is the air pump. Hmm, that's going to sound interesting. Oh, nice. That's nice. Okay, turn it off now. That's seriously impressive. Um, that's basically what you hear when you're like sat in some coaches or sat or stood on the platform and it's basically preparing the brakes, isn't it? Because it has to make sure that the, that vacuum seal runs all the way through the train. Uh, that's, that's a really nice touch. I'm impressed. Number five is apparently the injector. That's good. Oh, and even when you turn it off, it... it well... Yeah, yeah, God. Um, I turned it off like five minutes ago, but it just keeps doing stuff. Really good. Uh, and this is interesting. Number six is shunting mode. Remember when I was looking at the Black Five uh, in the video previous to this one? And I was sure that number six is shunting mode, and I was right. It is indeed shunting mode, so we won't bother with number six just now, and we'll go straight to number seven, which is apparently coal shoveling. Well, there's no doubt about that, is it? Is there? That's definitely coal shoveling. Hmm. That's interesting. Have you noticed that? What was it doing then? That wasn't part of the coal shoveling. Let's just turn the coal shoveling on again. You can almost see the little guy, or woman, although it was usually a guy, um, just shoveling that coal, can't you? But there's no additional sound this time. That's really clever. I really, really like that. Basically, even though she's just sat here sat, um, idling, it's as if the chip inside is monitoring how long she's sat here for. And every now and again, she just lets off steam. It's just so clever. Um, number eight is apparently the conductor's signal. Brilliant. Love it. Well, it's a shame we can't listen to number nine because that's... Oh, look, see what she's doing again. 
What are you doing? <laughs> Is she overheating? I mean... <laughs> I don't, I genuinely don't know what she's doing. It's almost as if... Just look at that! <laughs> and then all of a sudden it stops. Well, I, I do apologise. I'm clearly leaving her just sat there idling for too long and she's just overheating and wasting steam. So she's getting quite angry. But it's just amazing, isn't it? It's so clever, it's so well done. Now I know that you can buy ESU chips and lock sound and stuff like that and you can take these up to Olivia's trains and Sheffield and... Uh, you know, sound chips like that are superior to off-the-shelf sound chips like this one from Hornby. But come on, this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. This is beautiful. So, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by her, um, we can't listen to the brake release and we can't listen to a couple of whistles because my current controller doesn't allow me to do that. But hey, you know, I'm fine with that. That's okay. Because when I do get a new controller, I can suddenly listen to all these sounds again, can't I? So I'm looking forward to that. And there she goes again. She's like, come on, Will. Shut up talking. I want to go. Right, fine. Fine. Okay, this lady's got attitude. Right. Let's get her going then. Isn't that just mesmerizing? I mean, this is going really slowly. Oh, here come the killer express points. Will she survive? Oh, yes. Piece of cake. You'll notice I've also taken that little bit of spare rail out, out from between the tracks. Um, I think that was catching the DCC plug on the roof. This is all very well and good, but I think we need to get it going a little bit quicker, don't we? Turning the regulator, ever so slightly. Okay, she's going even faster now. <laughs> it's like she's got into a higher gear. It just sounds incredible. And of course the locomotive runs magnificently as well. Wow, and she'll go even quicker. Look at this. Bring it to a stop. Oh. oh my gosh. Just look at that. Wow. <laughs> Even brakes. Oh man, that is just stunning. That is beautiful. And if we just get her to back up a little bit, so that she's alongside Falcon. 
I think there's one more thing to do, and that's to couple her up to a load of coaches, and then to get us got some fair whack. This is so appropriate with the O4 Great Gathering next month. Look at these pair. Just look at them. Aren't they amazing? Yeah. Seriously, this model is fantastic. Oh, wow. It's just so exquisite. The sound, the detail, the motor, the smoothness of operation. If you like A4s, you know, such as Falcon here, or Sparrowhawk, or Mallard, or whatever, Silver Jubilee, there's loads. Well, there's 35. <laughs> um, yeah, if you like A4s, Sparrowhawk here has got to be the ultimate A4 locomotive to get hold of. She's just stunning.